If ever there was a vote that took us back to being the state's house, I think this is it. We should also note that 133 electoral divisions out of 150 delivered a yes vote. In Western Australia, it was a clean sweep. 16 seats out of 16 seats voted yes. Mr President, this was not just a vote about a law, but a vote about who we are as a people. I have listened to hundreds, if not thousands, of LGBTI Australians in past years. Many have written, emailed, Facebooked, tweeted, spoken to me in airports and at functions, or simply picked up the phone. There is a commonality in all these conversations and in all of our lives. It is that of rejection and acceptance, isolation and inclusion, but acutely shame and pride. It's the silent cord that runs through all of our lives, but acutely through the lives of LGBTI Australians. All too often the biggest hurdle for so many is that of self-acceptance and finding that path where we can honestly reconcile who we are with the hopes and dreams we have for our own lives and what we think are the expectations of others. I've been fortunate. I have an accepting, embracing and loving family. The heartbeat of their love for me didn't skip a beat. Not everyone is that fortunate. My own journey of acceptance has been greatly influenced by a book I read as a younger man. The book was Coming Out Conservative by Martin Liebman. It helped answer that question we all face. What must I do to live an honest and authentic life? It's a book that has sustained me through good times and through bad. Liebman writes, if I have learned anything about life, it is to be yourself, be what you are, no matter who you are or how you were born. Don't try to be what others want you to be. Accept the difference of others, include them in your lives. By shutting others out merely because they are different, you diminish your own life and that of your children. The decision of the Australian people to allow same-sex couples to marry is an offered hand to those deep chords within gay and lesbian Australians' lives. Nothing speaks more of acceptance than marriage. Marriage is also the way that we admit adult members to our loving families. As Paul Ritchie wrote in that beautiful book, Faith, Love and Australia, the conservative case for same-sex marriage. Marriage can be a powerful affirmation of our lives. A wedding is the day we see our parents' joyful tears and receive their blessing. It is when we hear our best friend's speech with love hidden in the humour. And it is when the love of our life is admitted to our family and we to theirs. It is the day we are blessed by our families. Because of this bill, that blessing will no longer be denied to our LGBTI children. One of the reasons this bill is so vital is that it reflects the deepest of liberal and conservative ideals. Liberal because it advances the sum of freedoms and conservative because it nurtures our families, affirms a vital institution and strengthens the social fabric which is the sum of all of our human relationships. Today I think of John Gorton, the only Prime Minister to come from the Senate and who 44 years ago moved a motion calling for the decriminalisation of homosexuality. In him we saw a liberalism that was empathetic and a man who even after achieving the highest office was still willing to walk a mile in another man's shoes. Gordon's mantle was taken up by hundreds of Liberal and National Party members who lent their name to the Libs and Nats for Yes campaign. To all, I say thank you. Jack Kennedy once said, with more than a touch of irony, that victory has a thousand fathers, but defeat is an orphan. When I look at this victory and the thousands who made it possible, I keep thinking of one man, the one who carried the torch well before there were any LGBTI members of the coalition. That man is the member for Leichhardt, Warren Ench. 
Like John Gordon, he is a wonderful mix of gruffness and empathy that made him the most unexpected but compelling of warriors. This bill is more Warren's than anyone's. We simply walk in the tracks that he's laid for us. Mr President, the Australian people have voted to change the Marriage Act. Now we must move decisively on their behalf. The Postal Survey was a vote on amending the Marriage Act, full stop. Yes, there are other worthy debates about freedom of expression and living out our shared values. And yes, I'll be a willing and enthusiastic participant in those debates. But those matters cannot be part of the Marriage Act. They can live for another day. This bill, in keeping with the express will of the Australian people, is solely about amending the Marriage Act. I believe this is a comprehensive bill and I'm willing to engage in the substantive issues the bill addresses. This bill seeks to remove existing discrimination from the Marriage Act, protect religious institutions and does not reintroduce commercial discrimination. Let me be clear. Amendments that seek to address other issues or which to seek which, or which seek to deny gay and lesbian Australians with the full rights, responsibilities and privileges that they already have will be strenuously opposed. Australians did not vote. Australians did not vote for equality before the law, so that equality before the law that is already gained be stripped away. This is a fair <coughs> bill. This bill recognises the special place of marriage that transcends our civic and religious life. In many ways, the undercurrent debate over recent years has been the question, is marriage a wholly secular institution or a wholly secular institution? My message <laughs> is that it can still be both, without curtailing our civic or religious freedoms. This bill advances the civic rights of all Australians and pro pro provides protection for religious institutions to continue to be guided by their own tenets of their own faith. Nothing in this bill takes away an existing right, nor does any of it diminish <coughs> an existing civil freedom. The change proposed in this bill is not revolutionary, it is evolutionary. Yesterday's decisive outcome after a 15-year debate is a reflection of Edmund Burke's admonition that time is required to produce that union of minds which alone can produce all the good we aim at. Our patience will produce more than our force. Mr President, whether we admit it or not, we all bring our full selves to this place. All of us are a product of our families, of our histories, our connections, and the parties and communities from which we come. It is the strength and wonder of being a representative body. I've spoken this morning very much as a gay Australian, but let me also say a few words as someone who is also a Christian Australian. It is much a part of who I am as my nationality or indeed my sexuality, and it is in part why I wrestled with this issue for so long. Being true to self is often as much about being true to the people who loved us and nurtured us, and that equally applies to me. My faith is not a platform, it's a refuge. It's why on my desk there stands a crucifix. It gives me strength when there appear to be difficult times ahead of me. So I want to acknowledge the very genuine concerns some Christians and religious people around Australia have expressed during this postal survey and give a voice to them. People voted no not because they had a particular problem with gay and lesbian Australians, but because they felt it was the easiest expression of their fear about the change in Australian culture towards people of religious faith. The no advocates spoke much about religious freedom, but couldn't point to what freedom was exactly being lost. That's because what religious people fear has little to do with laws, but everything to do with culture. Let me express the fears that many people of faith have in our modern world. 
Many Australians voted no because they fear a world where they won't be able to live their identity, where they can't fully express who they are. They fear a world where they will be shamed for who they are. They fear a world where their faith will be questioned by internet mobs and government tribunals. They fear a world where they mightn't be promoted at work if people knew what they believed or how they lived. They fear a world of ostracism for who they are and what God they follow. They fear a world where violence might be directed against them by a mad few for no other reason than the faith they profess, the place in which they choose to worship. I understand. I understand these fears because they are reflections of the fears that LGBTI citizens have felt through our country's history. Fears about acceptance, fears about jobs, fears about hiding a part of you, and yes, fears about violence. This vote is not about, and must not be about, replacing one persecuted minority with another, or giving one hope to one group while inflicting fear on another group. It must be about advancing the hopes and dreams of all citizens, no matter their sexuality, ethnicity or religion. As Australians, we have a shared inheritance. Sir Robert Menzies, using the beautiful words of St Paul, said that we are, as Australians, members of one family. And indeed, we are. The era of our times, Mr. President, is that too all, too, all too often in this chamber, we seek to advance the base that elected us rather than the nation that needs us, where we play to one group rather than to advance all. Yes, this is a great day for our democracy and our country, but it is also a day when we reaffirm our commitment to affirm the different identities of all our citizens and pledge ourselves to protect them all. Mr President, as a young man, I never believed I could serve as a senior advisor to a prime minister or a premier, because I was a gay man. John Howard and Richard Court both proved me wrong. I never believed that I could be pre-selected to be a Liberal Party candidate or senator. The Liberal Party proved me wrong. I didn't believe my name would ever be accepted by the people at an election. The people of Western Australia proved me wrong. And I never believed... And I never believed the day would come when my relationship would be judged by my country to be as meaningful and valued as any other. The Australian people have proven me wrong. To those who want and believe in change and to those who seek to frustrate it, I simply say, don't underestimate Australia. Don't underestimate the Australian people. Don't underestimate our country's sense of fairness, its sense of decency, and its willingness to be a country for all of us. Not only does our country live these values, it votes for them as well. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so that was live from the Senate at Parliament House in Canberra. The Liberals' Dean Smith opening debate on his bill to allow same-sex marriage in the wake of that historic survey result announced yesterday with 62% of Australians voting to support same-sex marriage. Dean Smith talking there of his personal experience coming out as a gay man and saying his bill reflects the deepest of Liberal and Conservative ideals and paying tribute to the member for Leichhardt in uh, Far North Queensland, Warren Ench, saying the bill is more his than anyone's. And so uh, that kicks off debate on the same-sex marriage issue in the Senate. Uh, that's going to go uh, for, it sounds like, for a couple of weeks and uh, we'll be dipping into uh, bits and pieces of that over the coming weeks. Francis Leach joins us now with the look of the day's sport. Uh, Francis, good morning. So how are the Socceroos able to burst through with that emphatic victory last <laughs> night and they're on their way to Russia now? Joe, it reads like an emphatic victory, but at half time as the Socceroos uh, stared down at a nil-nil uh, scoreline, they must have been worried 